Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to session BP1250. In this session, I will discuss securing digital sovereignty with an open source industrial IoT stack. To set the stage for the presentation, let's quickly review the agenda. We start with an introduction of your speaker, followed by a discussion of key terms such as data sovereignty, which will frame today's presentation. And since we're discussing this within the context of industrial automation, let's introduce the larger topics of Industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing. Next, we will talk about the impact of data sovereignty in the manufacturing space. And from there, we shift from theoretical to practical application with a real life example, that being the Intel sponsored Industry Fusion Foundation. After the introduction of Industry Fusion, we switch to highlighting how SUSE Rancher and Intel support the concepts of data sovereignty in the manufacturing space, and we continue to leverage the work done by Industry Fusion. Lastly, we take a look toward the future and talk about some of the potential areas where SUSE and Intel can expand their support of data sovereignty in the Industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing spaces. So without further ado, a little about myself. My name is Michael Benz, and I'm a member of the Edge Solutions team at SUSE, where I handle the technical aspects for new projects. Been with SUSE for about five years, and prior to joining the Edge Solutions team, I was the solutions architect supporting the embedded business. My background is in embedded system design and software development, primarily in storage and medical imaging, with over two decades focused on open source. With the introduction out of the way, let's establish some key terms to facilitate the rest of the presentation. People often bring up the terms industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing when discussing industrial IoT. Let's define these terms to create a sort of definition funnel. In his book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, Klaus Schwab describes the fourth industrial revolution as a transition from the third industrial revolution which was a digital revolution from the 60s to the 90s, to one that builds on the digital foundation from the third revolution. But it's characterized by a more ubiquitous and mobile internet, smaller and more powerful sensors, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. In Germany, around 2011, the term Industry 4.0 was coined to show how the fourth industrial revolution would revolutionize the organization of global value chains. One of the elements is the enablement of smart factories, which brings us to our second definition of smart manufacturing. NIST defines smart manufacturing as a fully integrated collaborative manufacturing system that responds in real time to meet changing demands in, and conditions in the factory, in the supply chain network, and in customer needs. To achieve the industry 4.0 global value chains in smart manufacturing environments, horizontal and vertical data integration is key. Vertical digitalization is data integration across the manufacturing, procurement, supply chain, design product, lifecycle management, logistics, operation, and quality. Whereas horizontal digitalization, on the other hand, may include the integration with suppliers, customers, and key partners. In other words, expanding beyond the factory to the larger critical ecosystem. As you can see, data is the critical element which brings us to data sovereignty. Data sovereignty is all about the ability to control your data and its usage across organizations. It's about the safely controlling who, how long, and under what conditions the data is shared. In ideal circumstances, it should control further usage and distribution once the data has been accessed. And of course, given the volumes of data and types of controls that we're referring to, decentralization of data is the key. Now that we've defined the key terms, let's start our transition from theoretical to practical application of Industry 4.0 best practices in smart manufacturing setups and how to protect and preserve data. As the manufacturing sector goes through the Industry 4.0 transformation and as smart manufacturing practices are applied, three major guiding principles come into play. The first one is simple to understand yet challenging to implement. Introduction of smart manufacturing practices and technologies are driven by two key goals, reduction of cost and quality improvements. 
and to address these goals from a data sovereignty perspective. The supply chain should be broadened. In the key term slide, I mentioned the need to pursue horizontal digitalization to achieve integration with suppliers, customers, and partners. Broad expansion is not only about adding new category elements, for example, having the ability to add suppliers to your process. It's the ability to have multiple of these by category to provide flexible manufacturing options, improved quality, and overall cost reduction. To create this broader supply chain, we need the ability to share data at scale with the relevant controls and access mechanisms. Lastly, to achieve the goal of an at-scale, horizontally integrated supply chain with secure and sovereign data exchange capabilities, we need a set of open standards and infrastructure with no vendor lock-ins. To continue our conversation on smart manufacturing and data sovereignty, we will look at a real-life example with the Industry Fusion Foundation. The Industry Fusion Foundation, as their website clearly states, pursues the goal of securing Europe's digital sovereignty and competitiveness in the digital age through intelligent networking of the manufacturing industry. To achieve that goal, the foundation is furthering the development of the open source vendor agnostic solution called Industry Fusion for the networking of smart factories and smart products. In terms of stakeholders, the Industry Fusion Foundation brings together three major groups, the machine builders, suppliers, and actual operators who want to see everything running and interoperable. To pursue the multi-vendor, multi-group interoperability, Industry Fusion, the app, has a three-layer model. The first layer is the ecosystem level, where a common understanding or semantic is defined to provide basic interoperability between the machines. In other words, what kind of data can you exchange when you have a type of machine, for example, a plasma cutter from some, several vendors? What's the minimal set of data that needs to be provided regardless of the machine vendor to be able to execute use cases? From an abstraction standpoint, you only care that you have plasma cutters regardless of the different brands. You want to issue a job and have all of them cut the objects described. The second layer consists of data that can be extracted from the machine itself. With this, you then build concrete virtual assets on the elements provided by the machine manufacturer. The third layer is the factory operator layer. This is where you deploy your model at the factory level and can make intelligent decisions based on the data provided by the different devices that were mapped into the two layers above from which machines to execute a particular job based on multiple categories. For example, things like location, availability, capability, manufacturing requirements, or even environmental requirements. Looking at the implementation of the industry fusion model an actual compute architecture, we have two tiers of computing machinery with associated functionality. Machines and computing equipment connecting assets on the shop floor, bringing the data together and making it usable for the stakeholders in the process. The lower layer gateways are collecting data from the shop floor via protocols like MQTT or OPC UA. The data from the machine is often not semantically described. It needs to be defined within the context of the machine manufacturer and ecosystem layer as described in the previous slide. And let's remember that we are not talking about one machine on a shop floor, but all of the assets. The upper levels is where all of the data from the different gateways comes together, is processed, stored, and made available to the factory operator, as well as other data services, all while leveraging the concepts of data sovereignty. Now let's talk about the software stack that operates on an industry fusion smart box. As previously mentioned, within the industry in general, and the Industry Fusion Foundation in particular, there's a preference to use open source technologies whenever possible. The smart boxes today are running on Intel-based processors and OpenSUSE as the operating system. OpenSUSE was selected because it is well known as a great platform for makers, sysadmins, and developers alike. It provides the layered services for things like device enablement, remote and network management, and security and updates that are needed to deploy K3s. From an industry fusion perspective, K3s is their base layer. 
the different application components are deployed as pods on the K3's cluster. Now let's talk about the deployment and onboarding of a gateway device. As I previously mentioned, the function of the gateway is to read data from a variety of sources with differing protocols, send this data in a standardized manner to the server environment. To achieve this, data from the machine manufacturer is needed to initiate the process of onboarding the gateway device and an onboarding is comprised of three steps. In the onboarding process, each machine to be onboarded on a specific gateway cluster node needs to have a concrete deployment descriptor or machine config git repos. We pull each configuration for a respective machine from the git repos and combine in sequence to build a described asset profile, which is stored in the configuration YAML. We then use Kubernetes to translate this asset profile description into a list of containers to be installed and the respective configuration of those containers. The containers are then pulled by the gateway from a local Fusion image repository. In today's iteration of Industry Fusion, data movement is one way. Data from the machine is sent via the gateway to the edge server or edge cloud to help build its digital shadow. Note that I did not use the more popular term digital twin because to me, a digital twin implements a bi-directional exchange of data between the physical machine and digital asset. To achieve that desired state of a two-way communication, which would allow you to make changes to a machine based on data analysis, requires the cooperation of machine manufacturers, safety, and the machine operators. This is part of the long-term effort led by the Industry Fusion Foundation. From a computing infrastructure perspective, there are a number of actions that SUSE and Intel can execute on, which leads us to the next segment. The SUSE Rancher and Intel Industry Fusion Engagement. From SUSE's perspective, we believe there are two key areas of industrial IoT infrastructure where we provide immediate value. On the Linux side of the house, SUSE has been working for the last few years on SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro also known as SLE Micro. SLE Micro is a distribution built to address the requirements of cloud native, edge, and IoT environments with an immutable design and security features to ensure a reliable runtime. It incorporates the Intel developed FIDO technology for secure device onboarding. In fact, we work closely with Intel to make the FDO client for secure device onboarding and facilitate zero touch solutions. It provides a longer support life cycle, four years for each point release, starting with version 5.1. And in short, SLE Micro is the ideal platform to, to deploy K3s at the edge. From the ground up, SUSE is approaching digital sovereignty by leveraging various technologies at each layer of the stack. First, we start with trusted boot of signed EFI images that can be validated via the Intel Trusted Execution Engine or an add-on trusted platform module. And if this is a fir first boot instance, we leverage the FIDO open IoT standard to verify the identity of a new edge device. As we move up the stack from EFI bring up of the hardware and secure onboarding, we get to the SUSE layers. With SLE Micro for Rancher, you get an immutable OS built specifically for your containerized workloads at the edge. We also provide SLE container-based images you can build upon allow you to benefit from the SLE lifecycle to guarantee your containers are up to date from a security and bug fix standpoint. Next, we add in K3s, which is our CNCF certified Kubernetes single node cluster solution to run your workload at the edge or where resources may be constrained. Also with the acquisition of NuVector, we add the capability of full container lifecycle management. NuVector provides visibility and control of the Kubernetes network traffic and container processes, as well as vulnerability management, runtime security, and compliance. Lastly, we add in Rancher to manage the entire SUSE stack. And with recent enhancements to Rancher and the addition of SLE Micro for Rancher, you now get the ability to manage and update all layers, including the OS. How do we see the future of digital sovereignty evolving? With SLE Micro, K3s, and Rancher integration as the core to facilitate edge device and digital twin deployments. 
We understand that evolution will be complicated and can assist with the process. With tools like Harvester, we provide a single pane of glass to manage a hyper-converged infrastructure where you can mix virtual machines and containers. Working with IDS practitioners, we continually look at what we can do in code to provide intrusion detection or alert when data has been accessed or manipulated. Lastly, we work with our customers and partners to develop and deliver solutions to, to support your AI-enabled business models. Thank you for joining today. This concludes my session. I hope it provided insight into where we are headed with digital sovereignty and how you can work with SUSE in developing your industrial IoT and edge solutions. Mm -hmm.